Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at Jumia and an update on what the stock's been doing and what might be coming up. We'll be overviewing a lot today, so hope you enjoy the video. Also, consider subscribing to the channel here if you're interested in learning about investing in Africa. So if you remember what we saw after the last earnings report back in November, it wasn't pretty. The stock went down like 20% that first day, but soon after we saw a huge rally in the next few weeks bringing the stock price from like 12 bucks a share to a high of almost 50 bucks a share just a week or two ago. And that huge 300% gain, I think, can be attributed to two different big reasons. Number one was an overreaction after the earnings report sell-off. The numbers weren't pretty, yes, that's true. But it also was in line with what the company's goals have been, which is to reach profitability even if they have to sacrifice revenues. And to reach profitability, they have, they had to eliminate any first-party products they are selling, which have low profit margins. And they are focusing on developing their platform for third-party transactions. And we saw on the earnings report that this was actually successful, and their costs were much lower. So I suspect that a lot of people realized that the big drop wasn't really fair since the company had done what they said that they are in fact trying to do. So we got a pretty considerable rally after this. And then that brings us to the second reason for the gains, which has to do with short sellers covering. Because you can see from the chart that we got a really sharp rally to bounce back. And I suspect that the large amount of people shorting Jumia covered their position after the stock started going back up. And then when they proceeded to buy those shares, it obviously escalated into more gains and more short sellers covering, which helped contribute to the big rally we've seen in the past month and a half from Jumia. And did a lot of people buy on the way, seeing the momentum? Yeah, that was probably also a big factor. So right now, in the past week and a half or so, we've seen a pretty considerable sell-off from the high of 49 bucks a share to a recent close of around $35 a share, which is a decline of around 28%. And I would say the biggest reasons for that are pretty obvious, but to run through them, first we've got the profit taking that is almost certainly going to happen when people are making 300 plus percent returns in just a few weeks. And then this also connects to the fact that Jumia's market cap also had increased by 4x in such a short time, which obviously isn't really warranted since uh, we're still lacking a lot of info on how their company might perform in the long term. So yeah, for sure, I agree. A growth company like Jumia in an emerging market deserves a premium, but there's a certain point which it just doesn't make sense to buy at certain prices. But the next catalyst that I think will have a huge effects on Jumia stock is their next earnings report, which is due likely in mid-February. And I think the stock is due for a huge drop or potentially a huge gain, depending on the report. So basically a very volatile move. And what a lot of people are looking for in that report is for their gross merchandise value. It should be higher because it was much lower as they were changing their platform to focus on third parties. So if their gross merchandise value is higher, it would indicate they are driving a good amount of growth via their third party vendors. The other things that are important, of course, is their revenue and profitability. And the real number is the revenue because they've already showed last quarter they are able to get much closer to achieving profitability but their revenue was much lower. So if this revenue is higher, their profit margins are likely to continue uh, the same pace they have been on. So they will in effect be making more money. And the interesting thing is that this ties into the gross merchandise value, which likely will result in revenues being higher if their GMV value is improved. And some other key metrics that I'll be looking for is their customer growth, their Jumia pay growth statistics, one of the most exciting parts of their company, and also their food delivery service, which is interesting in uh, talking about the pandemic. Another thing worth mentioning is that Bloomberg recently wrote in an article in November that African economies have been growing well during the pandemic because of coronavirus limiting their exporting of natural resources and focusing on remote commerce growth. They also talked about the decline in COVID cases, particularly in a place like South Africa, which is a huge part of Africa's economy. That said, they did kind of speak a little too soon because you can see from the chart that South Africa's COVID cases have been skyrocketing lately. So that is definitely something to consider along with the information they provided. I mean, that's pretty horrible timing if you're looking at that chart. And also their article is linked in the description if you want to read more about that. 
But with all that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will definitely be back soon for another video on an African company. Um, thanks for watching, and consider subscribing to the channel. See ya.